My name is Luc Sala, and in one of our conversations about growth and consciousness, today we talk with Maria Lee. She represents a process called whole self discovery and development. Now that's quite a mouthful. Maria, what does that mean? Whole self discovery and development. Well, it's the process of getting to that part of you that knows everything you've ever experienced. There's a part of you that knows all about you, but you're not conscious of it. Well, I've hidden it a little bit, don't I? <laughs> yes. However, many people do things automatically. For example, they may get into, when everything wonderful is happening, everything is beautiful, we have no problems, but when there are challenges in our lives, and we repeat them over and over again in our lives, then it causes a lot of pain for people. Are you specifically referring to early childhood um, experiences that are traumatic and, and form us? We're going sooner than that. We're talking about a process that reveals the, the non-conscious decisions that you made before you, are, you even came into consciousness. Okay, so you're going back to the time that you are in the womb. Like, like a decision, these people are going to be my parents. Mm -hmm. Yes, we choose our parents, we decide the type of life we're going to have, however we forget. We forget that we made a decision to have a certain type of pattern or belief about our life. So this process reveals to you why you do what you do. How you do your life, how you create, how you manifest, even your intimacy patterns, your beliefs about money, your beliefs about mm -hmm. God, the universe, everything. Now that is what... Uh an astrology might say to me, he said, yes, I can tell you where you come from or where you're going. Mm -hmm. There are systems like the Enneagram that kind of give you an idea what your personality structure. There are very scientific methods, the Myers-Briggs method that tells you whether extrovert or introvert. Mm -hmm. There is uh, the human design system that tells you what chakras are developed. Aren't these all different words for the same basic knowledge? Yes, and what this process does is it takes you one more step. It shows you the things that are your gifts, but it also tells you how to change and transform all the things that you really would like to change, because it changes in your brain. So this actually changes the neurological pathways to your brain, so that the release of the energy of the belief is transformed into its positive aspect. So well, you we, we go too fast here. <laughs> okay. Neurological. I mean, we know what neurolinguistic programming is, which means that our Well, that's things programming. Yeah, that's programming. It's, in your, it's, it's like hardwired in your system that if... Okay, so if we're talking about a computer... Well, uh, that's, that's a way of looking at it. Okay. But NLP is a way where you say, there are things in our mind that are kind of hardwired, but we can change them if we go to the root of it and change mm -hmm. a little bit. Does the whole self process does a similar thing? It goes a little deeper than that, in that you are looking at the belief structure before you came into your being, your non-conscious beliefs. So as you're approaching mother and father from your soul aspect, there's a decision that has been made prior. For example, a psychic can see the, the baby in the aura field of or the energy field of mother and father about six or eight weeks before mother is even pregnant. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, it's because we already have made some decisions about that. But have we, or, ha or has the universe? Well, that I can't answer. But I can say that people prove over and over again that they have full memory of that time of being in the womb. But scientific research has already proven where the genetic coding, as well as there's a great body of evidence by the many organizations worldwide that prove that we're also the coding of the emotional and um, psychological things that happen to mother and father Wait during moment. the time we're in the womb. The, the, one of the, the great sayings of that, I, that always touched me by uh, the guy from the Prophet, was it Ga Khalil Ga Gibran? Gibran, he said, you pick your parents, your parents don't pick you. That's the saying that in the same words. Well, I think that it's a choice between parent and child. Mm -hmm. Because, well, at least in our organization... An interaction, then. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh -huh. We make all of these choices together. And the choice is to 
be imprinted by our parents with a certain belief system that we have that give us challenges to live our life and unfold our life. Are However, you saying that in fact we we not only choose our life but we choose our masters, our, our teachers, our lessons mm -hmm. and that the, the whole life is a process. So why go to the whole self which sounds like a quicker way to learn the lesson. Is that why, why not wait and let the history unfold? <laughs> well, we come here to remember we want to be conscious and the main search of most people is to be conscious. They're constantly, on a daily basis, trying to reach higher consciousness, enlightenment, trying to remember why this is happening in their life, trying to discover. So that's why we're called Discovery, because we help you to discover what you have forgotten, all the things that you came here to do, and what are the things you came here to transcend. To well, I, I agree with all the, the background, uh, but I, I feel like, oh, there's another process. I mean, we... We're here in Amsterdam, and many teachers come, and the one teaches this, and they do satsang, and they say, and some of them say, well, it's all about shaking up, and, and then there come the Buddhist teachers, and they say, well, read the Book of the Dead, and the story you tell me about choosing a new life and a new career, and that's basically the same story as the Buddhists tell, at, at least the Tibetan Buddhists tell us. So we all know this, and yet there are very few, well let's not call them holy people, mm -hmm. or realized people in town. That may be, and this process really changes your life. We have proof of that. For the last 15 years I've been doing this process. And what did it do and for you? What it did for me is it changed habits that I had that were repetitive, things I didn't understand about my life, that became very clear. And the moment that they were clear, I was able to release myself, because I had been searching to find out why. Why do I do these things? But isn't that what a Jungian or a Freudian psychoanalyst does? He talks with you and he says, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, but that's because your father, you know. He's telling me. Well, well you this know, is you. coming from No, myself. no, their approach is that you talk about it and then you mm -hmm. realize and then you work well, to the We don't talk about the story. We simply go into the emotion and we use, the process that we use takes you through a matrix of questions, 22 significant moments in the prenatal period. So we're going through. You can the ask. Moment. Wait a minute. You can ask people questions about their prenatal experiences. Yes. What do you you hit them very hard or what? <laughs> <laughs> it's very gentle process, and it's non-emotive. We don't hip hypnotize you. We don't put you in a trance. We just simply take you through a process that connects you to your whole self, and then we can ask you these questions. You write down your answer, mm -hmm. and then those answers tell you what everything about your life, whether it's your in your sexuality how you create money, anything. You can always look in this you matrix and we give you a process to change that, a process that actually changes not your habits. We don't try to change by telling you, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. Say this 50 times in the mirror and you will transform. No, this really changes inside of your belief system. Most processes don't do that. They tell you what's wrong. Yeah, come on, 24 questions about something <laughs> I don't even know about, and it helps. You were there. You were there during the time your mother was pregnant with you, right? You must have. Mm, yeah, and, and some people say that there's proof that I heard the voices around me and that I picked up what she was eating and that all the chemicals she took and if she was smoking and all that has influenced me. I can understand that. That's but, true. you know, I'm like a bossy figure. Would that come from that period? Yes. And we can show that to you. If we'll welcome you to come to our process and show you all about you. <laughs> mm. Now, who found this out? I mean, uh, it's not in the Bible. This is a process that John Richard Turner developed in, in the United States. He was doing therapy in Beverly Hills. And he realized that people were coming to him that had been in therapy seven, ten years. And they had not had very significant movement in their life. And so he began to think about where this might come from. So he made a little joke and said, well, this, all they have in common is that they were born. And so he began to think about that and meditate on it. And one day these questions came to him and he began to try them out with people. And uh, he was giving a lecture here in Europe uh, to therapists. And suddenly he gave some of the questions and some of the people began to cry. <laughs> and 
to release the information from them and release some traumas. So he began to realize that he needed to explore more. So for 30 years now, he know. has been doing this work. His name was Robert Turner. No? John Richard Turner. And he is here in Amsterdam. Okay. So he gives regular workshops. He gives workshops, he does mm -hmm. private sessions and teaches the work mm -hmm. and I do that in the United States. Now, the funny thing is why him, why this? I mean, why didn't uh, Mohammed in the year 600 get the same information and said, "Okay, guys, these are the 24 questions and this is the system." Um why is this last part of this century full with people who have this insight? I think people are ready to change their lives right now rather than trying to find something that is a band-aid. They're ready to transform and prepare mm -hmm. for their life and live their life fully. But why does it come in so many varieties? Because as an outsider I look at you and hear your story and I see you and I say, hey, this is nice, this is a nice and calm energy. But I see other people, Isaac Shapiro is in town and I, I meet many people who have different words but also basically the same message is, you know, there's something in you that you have to accept most of the mm -hmm. time. And then the change you're seeking for in your personal life will come not because you want to change, but because you accept yourself. I mean, that's the basic message that I pick up from all these gurus and systems and processes. Well, most people want to change. Most people want something that's going to change them and they don't have to do anything for it. So it just depends how deep you want to go. And I believe that there are many things in the world right now that do the same thing. You it's just like an emerging energy. Yes, the energy is ready, people are ready, and everyone receives things differently. So some person might receive it even just through doing yoga or kundalini yoga or any process that, you know, someone may say something to a person in the street and transform their life. It's just that's a, what it's I a think conscious secret choice inside. I think secretly beggars do that, you know. They look at people <laughs> yes. and say, you know, I'm re this guy needs to be told. Something. <laughs> <laughs> and the message comes and that's how yeah, that yeah, person yeah. agreed yeah, to receive a, it. So. I have this fantasy that people that have decided to live without money or whatever have a secret knowledge that they can do something with. Yeah, well, we must find out someday. <laughs> you okay. need to interview some of them. <laughs> I, I do. No. <laughs> Whole self-discovery and development. Nice. But how long does it take? Is it like um, you go to a psychiatrist and it takes you five years and this $100 a week? This is the magical part. This is the magical part because you come to a weekend seminar where one day we give you the questions and the correlations, what they mean in your life, and the following day we give you the processes to change the belief systems that you want to change, and that's it. You do a 21-day process yourself that we give to you, and that changes... You know, we can change our mind right away, and our spiritual self can have a revelation. But the physical body needs a process because it's denser. It needs so a little bit of rewiring. Yeah. So we give you a 21-day process called balancing. Mm -hmm. It takes maybe 20 minutes to half an hour per person to do. And you take that home, you do it for 21 days, and you begin to feel the changes. But most mm -hmm. people change right there. They begin to, as they make a realization to change the way that they see their whole life. It sounds very simple and it is very gentle and easy and you can come and experience. Mm -hmm. You understand I see so many people who have this and then yes. I think, Jesus, one day maybe I'm finished, I'm ready and this is it. <laughs> <laughs> but on the it's other thing... It's an unfolding <laughs> thing. I mean, ev our life is a, an unfolding mm -hmm. uh, tapestry and uh, you're always at the beginning, you know, every day. So well, I like the way it is, but maybe... Uh, <laughs> but tell me, you, you have spoken with many people. Mm -hmm. Out of the 24 questions, there must be some things that you recognize, say, in Western culture, they say, okay, most people really have this problem. They have this... They mm -hmm. have this... They made this choice, let's put it in your words, yeah? I have worked in Germany and in Amsterdam and many different parts of the world in Central America and I find that most people have very similar patterns. It's very interesting. Yeah, well, I thought that I would there? find, well, you know, they're mainly wanting to connect to someone else, to have self-esteem, to believe in themselves, to understand the nature of their personal power. 
to not be trapped in belief systems of pain and abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you come from Mesoamerica. You come where? From I what? I come from Nicaragua. Uh, we in the West have a feeling that that's maybe more primitive, but thereby more <laughs> uh, connected to the root energy, to the nature energy. Do you see? Do you see a difference between our Western world that is uh, a little bit stressed out and, and? Well, I would say that people who have lived in uh, in countries where they they have experienced war, they're not quite as attached to um, how beautiful they look or their image. Or the material yes, that's thing. true, right? In Western, in the Western world, it is more of a material thing, as to where places that, uh, that are more connected to the earth are concerned still about their belief system about themselves. It really is about us, as mm -hmm. much as I'd like to say, people are caring. You can see the visionary in a person. You can recognize the pattern of a visionary. We've worked with many. Uh, people and you can recognize their connection to one another. Uh, you can have a group of people in the room from maybe 15 different, uh, 20 different nationalities and there will be an energy that connects the whole group. And oftentimes, for example, a policeman might have the same patterns as a criminal with one or two slides. I can understand that. In Holland, we believe they're not so much different. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's true. <laughs> like a firefighter, it might be uh, a guy who likes to make fire too. Yes, very true. And, we c and you can see specifically how that is. But every, every person, no matter how terrible their life has been, has a power within to transform. And we have worked with gang members that have a power of the vision. You now live in L.A. In L.A. And, so and gangs is, is, is crowds of people, or groups of people that are together into the mafia or, or, or street gangs. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, whether it's a street gangster, they all have a desire. The, once you transform the negative energy has just as much power to be destructive and then if you can take that and look at its unfoldment of its true power, what it really wants, then that person can transform their life. The worse the pattern, the easier it is to transform. Well, if that were true, prisons would, would work. And do they? Well, how do we treat the prisoner? They're in jail, and there is nothing really that they're given to transform their life or to look at why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. Most people want to know, why do I do what I do and you do, can't do you think that let's say psychotherapy or even the whole self discovery process would should be part of, of, of prison life? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because no. yeah. Pe people like Tim Leary in the sixties said that L S D and they did research with inmates with L S D and other substances said it did change them, but that whole line of research, you know, we now just put them away in, in not even government run uh prisons, but in a, you know, we, we make it corporations that run the prisons and so on. We make it a business. That's right. If we make it a business, then someone is receiving something for it. If someone is in prison, it's from our own fear. If we begin to run our life from fear, then we attract. You are a harmonic. You are an energy. You're an energy being. And like attracts like in the universe. So if I am afraid and I walk around afraid, I'm going to attract something that will trigger that fear in me and make me afraid. Mm. So Still, there, there's has the <laughs> power to change. Yeah, yeah. Uh, does does Wolf, one have to change? I mean, this is where... You don't have to change if you're happy with your life. Wonderful. No, but you could also say your scenario, your life plan has been set out for a specific reason and tampering with the plan by psychotherapy or drugs or whatever uh, takes away the experience. And even if I go along with your whole idea of that you choose a life, so why would I then, then try to make the shortcut? If you chose your life, then you chose to run into me and transform your life. To make a choice that here you are going along in your life, mm -hmm. and then suddenly you're thinking, I wish this was different, or I wish my relationships were different. I wish I could understand why I can't commit to a single woman or man. Or I wish that no matter how hard I work, I could have benefit from it. 
So suddenly you run into someone from whole self and they're able to show you why you have that choice. Because our number one principle is you can't change something until you know what needs to be changed. You have to know what it is that you want to change. You have to look into the root of the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you only, if you use NLP, let's say, you're only looking to how you are in your behavior. And there's lots of behavioral modification. Well, yes, but that is a dangerous thing because, well, you stop smoking and then you eat sweets or yeah, whatever. Yeah, then, it's, it's, right. It's, uh, but smoking. Symptomized. Right. Yeah, you smoking is symptomatic of something else that you believe about yourself. So I make one more people jump. People stop yeah. smoking. People can stop drinking. Um, they can stop abuse patterns. They can change their life. Like overnight, they can change their life. We have people who have come, who have been on. Um, let's say recently, we had a, a older woman who came, and she was afraid to drive, afraid to go into the markets all of her life. She was afraid. Also, uh, she was on medication for her heart. And the second morning, the second day, she had stopped taking, she didn't need her medication, she wasn't having any anxiety attacks, and when she drove home... Yeah, but wouldn't a doctor say that all these things are related, that people are afraid to go out because they might have fears about their heart and stuff like that? And so no, she was afraid, she had different kinds of fears, she was af mm -hmm. afraid of that she couldn't control her vehicle. Whatever the fear might be, it went away. Mm -hmm. And then she decided that that was the first day she would go home and she would go to the market and see if it was true. So she went to the market and said that it was completely gone, the fear. Mm -hmm. And this has been uh, maybe six, seven months. And her son had sent her to the program because he was concerned about her life, whether she was going to live and be a recluse. Mm -hmm. And she's 73 years old. So now, six months later, a man that had loved her most of her life started thinking about her and went to find her and now he's building them their dream home and they're <laughs> going to be married and she's very very happy so okay. even at 73 you can change your life mm -hmm. we work with kids that are 15 okay. years old mm -hmm. who are already getting in trouble and that's the place of transformation okay maria i go one step deeper really okay um there are similar processes that ask you questions and bring you back to also prenatal things. It's called Scientology. How does this system relate to Scientology? Is it similar? Well, I guess it's similar in that there are questions. And I believe Scientology uses... Um, An e-meter. It, it uses yes, a system basically to say whether it's true or not. Yes, which is sure uh, you're... Yeah, which is not... I mean, it's not a miracle thing. The, the technology is known. Uh, we can do, ex actually, here in Mystere, we have people who do brain wave analysis, yeah. and uh, you can do it. We have the, uh, how do you call it, Lime, Lime meter, whatever. Uh, yes, it, yeah. So that's not it. But the idea was that you could go back and ask people questions and thereby revive memories, and then you work through it. Mm -hmm. That's the good part. The bad part is that when you wake up, they give you all kinds of <laughs> crappy stories that that... that are questionable. But their basic idea is the same as what you're telling me. Well, there is a meter and that is alive inside of you. You know what's true and you don't need to measure it. It already exists inside of you as a specific measurement. You're already conscious. You just need to remember and trigger your own memory. Um, this is a very specific matrix that deals and shows you all of the steps you took to understand all of you. But do you see Somehow the similarity with the Scientology absolutely. process? Absolutely. Well, well, maybe you're not I so familiar, not, but they I have... I am not trying to reprogram you. Mm -hmm. we are, you are making a choice to change your own program once you understand your program. No one is measuring you. Okay, but yeah, that's the difference. And, because and also, I am randomly trying to find out something in Scientology. You're saying... No, it's not totally questions. randomly. There, there's levels and, and, and mm -hmm. question lists and uh, And how many process. years does it take? Do you know? Well, I'm not saying that the rest I'm of the process after mm -hmm. the... the well, what I like about Scientology is that they have, as one of the first organizations in the world, this, this man, um, what was his name? Um, uh, Hubbard. Uh, Ron Hubbard, developed the idea of, of going 
into your past and, and mm -hmm. asking questions beyond the level of consciousness. Right. That was that was pretty good, and many people have taken the same idea or, or, or had similar ideas. What he did later, it after the deeper programming, he reprogrammed you, and that was wrong, or that was wrong anyway. You can make a choice to whether you want it or not, and I, I don't want that for myself. That particular brand or color of reprogramming. Mm -hmm. What you say is that we allow people to be deprogrammed in the same way and then make a choice for themselves. Yes, you choose how you're going to, how your new program is going to look from inside of you. No one tells you how to do it. You don't have to be measured on how you're going to do it. And you also get to look at the gifts that you have as well, which is very important for some people who have never realized uh, that they have certain gifts that they already innately came with and that they have not unfolded because maybe one little thing is sabotaging them that they are using to sabotage themselves and also to take a hundred percent responsibility for your life yourself not what someone else is going to tell you not the therapist or society or me or you but simply what I choose to believe myself did you it's ever meet important. anybody who had no gifts? No. So no. you're really looking at people as very positive beings? Yes. And then you get to look at yourself as a very positive being, as a conscious being, and where your consciousness came from. And you can then now own that for yourself because you, you get to experience and feel all of those things inside of you so you know they're real. No one is trying to get you to feel or think anything. This mirror isn't a little bit rosy colored? No, because if people have had abuse, you can recognize that you have an abuse pattern, for example, that you attract that level of energy. Mm -hmm. No one may did anything to you. So that's very strong for people who have been abused to recognize, to say, you, you know, sometimes people say, you mean I created this? Yes, you came here to experience that, but now you're looking at it from your whole consciousness, mm -hmm. not simply as one event. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Louise Hay, who had mm -hmm. this method whereby also you would talk to your subconscious? A lot of criticism came because people who had cancer or some you know, very bad diseases started believing that and still died and then they felt it was a very frustrating process to be responsible for yourself and then still having cancer or having all these terrible things in your life? Well, yes, I can have a disease. However, I can take responsibility for how I created it. Yeah, but the way you and say it, you are responsible for what you yourself are. Yes, and you can decide to heal. See, once you own responsibility, if you can see that you are the creator of it, then you can choose. People go into remission all the time. That yeah, we know that miracles so happen, but it's it's miracles. so if if it doesn't happen and your loved ones die, and and from your point of view, which is you know really you you believe that God is inside of us, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the other view is that there is an external power that decided for us, so we can say, okay, this is the will of God, and uh, you know, I don't feel responsible, and the people around me can't blame me for being what I am because uh, it's God's will. Mm -hmm. What you say is that we can and should take charge of our own thing. Yeah, you can decide what to believe also. So if you believe that Latrell is going to heal your cancer, then it will, if you believe it. So I think that it's very important for people to recognize what is cancer inside of me. Uh, what is the man who developed uh, polio, the polio vaccine? Jonathan Salk. Okay. So Jonathan Salk, in his book, wrote about how he discovered the vaccine to cure it. He said he spoke to it, and it told him how the healing should happen and what was the vaccine about mm -hmm. and what the disease of, of polio was about. So that is what we have to do. We have to speak to our own illness, speak to our cancer or to whatever it is that we have, and the whole self process gives you that. We have a second process that deals with, that takes you from the moment of birth to now. So, yeah, Maria, what you're saying is that we have a, an enormous power over what, what we perceive, our perception, uh, over reality, over, about sickness. Jesus, you make people responsible for themselves. 
What a concept. Yes. We But are, a lot of people are. run away like crazy. They say, hey, I don't want this responsibility. It's my father's fault. It's the boss's fault. It's God's mm -hmm. will. Whatever. Well, that's true. And those people can choose. We all have conscious choice. So those who want to choose to be in health and wellness and well-being and know that they are in charge of their life and their reality mm -hmm. can choose whole self-discovery. Yeah, but and all, all through history, people like you were put on the stakes. We're called witches <laughs> or Qatars or Ketters, as we say. Mm -hmm. um, you were considered as the people who saw the authority in yourself and thereby defying you know, the supreme will of God and the dogmas of the church. And away with you, on the stakes, burn them, you know, send them to America, Australia, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't it wonderful that now that is not what's true. We're recognized. Here you are. We're speaking about this. And it's being welcomed into the world because people are ready for change and to take responsibility. And we not only can we do in the back garden of Mister, but we can actually air it. Maria Lee, thank you for your time. Thank you so much.